This is going to be a quick tour of the mypattern.cloud website where you can manage, share and develop patterns compatible with Singly 2D. Along the top are my main tabs, my patterns shows me my patterns, individuals shows me the individuals that I'm holding measurements for, including the ability to see the history of measurements over time, the patterns I'm using those measurements for, and sharing tells me which groups I'm in and also the patterns that have been offered to those groups. To import a file, I drag the file onto this button here. This tells me the measurements file that it's expecting and also whether I've got any measurements files that I could use that I've already got, but I'm going to load these from the .bit file and press finish. That then shows me the pattern and I can look at the information for that and I can tag that with uh, women's blocks, close that, and then that's now on my home page. I can use these tags to filter the patterns that I'm displaying, um, though in this case that won't achieve a great deal. I can also look at patterns that have been shared by other people. Uh, for instance, if this pattern here looks like it might be useful for me, then I can pin that. And having pinned it, that will then show on my patterns. So looking at a pattern, I can click the pattern to take me to the pattern's own homepage. I've got a number of tabs along the top. Info gives me details about this pattern. This was actually from Patterns Hall Online, so I'll just reference the website on there. Measurements tab shows me the measurements for the current uh, measurements file I'm using. I can add another uh, commission for this pattern and either upload the measurements or enter the measurements like so. I'm going to switch back to the fully completed measurements. It shows me my variables. Drawing shows me the drawing. I'll come back to this. Pieces show the uh, pattern pieces, which I can uh, export, download as SVG. On the import tab, I can import a new version. If I've been editing this in Seemly 2D, for example, on the sharing tab, I can share with a group. And when I share with a group, I can optionally share the measurement set as well. Uh, I can check the information that's going to be shared, uh, the license it's going to be shared with. I can also create a shareable link, which is a link I could put into uh, a website. On the export tab, I can generate an SVG export with all the pattern pieces in it. I can also export the pattern for editing in Simuli 2D and I can choose the version of the Simuli 2D file that I want to be compatible with. I'll press that button and that will download a Simuli 2D bar and the measurements file to go along with it. I'm going to go back to look at the drawing. Uh, there's a toolbar here. Uh, this button here will take you to the full page. This display is made of two parts. One is the diagram, which I can zoom and pan. And the other is a table of elements in the pattern, which contains the measurements, variables, and then the drawing objects. I can display just the drawing, 
drawing and table or just the table. At any point I can return to a zoom level where I can see the whole pattern by pressing the zoom to fit button. If I click on an element in the drawing, the table scrolls to the appropriate point. The blue lines highlight the dependencies, the things that F14 is dependent upon, and the green lines highlight the dependencies, which are the things that depend on F14. So F14 uses F12 and B2 waste, and is used by F18. I can navigate around the table by following these blue links. The diagram shows dependencies too. I can click in the table. It will highlight the corresponding item on the diagram and it will also highlight in blue the items that are used by this item. From within this view I can navigate the table. I can, for instance, its measurements. So I'm going to 85 and the drawing adapts accordingly. This button here controls what's visible. I've currently got a group which is called original dart which I can show and hide. I can also decide whether I want to show the formulas or their values. So if you look at the table, here we're showing formulas, here we're showing values. I'm going to go back to the normal display. This button here shows me the revisions I have of this pattern. I can edit, allow edits of revision 1, which is the file I've uploaded. By default, the files you upload are not editable. You can either allow edit of them or create a new version. I'm going to create a new version. This will take just a moment. So now on revision two, I can flip back and look at revision one and revision two. They are currently the same. I'm going to go back to full screen and as this is now editable I could edit a variable I could also create new variables In edit mode, when I click on an element, either in the drawing or in the table, we have the same menu either way, that allows me to edit the element, which we'll do in a moment. I can add it to an operation. I can change the sequence. I can add it to a group or create a new group and add it to that. I can change the line and the color. If I edit this, I can change any of its values. I can also change the type of this object uh, to a compatible one. So this is currently point at length and angle, and I can change that to point line intersect if I wanted to. I can also create new drawing elements. So if I wanted a point on this curve at the height of the waist. I could do that. I could create a new point curve intersect axis and I can, it defaults my base point to be the point I clicked on. My curve wants to be that one. My angle of this axis from F14 is going to be 180 degrees. We'll make this a dotted line in cornflower blue. 
these colours and line styles will get defaulted to those values the next time. And that then creates a point on this line. By default, our new point got added at the end of the list of drawing elements, but I can click on that and say sequence as early as possible, which will move it as early in the sequence of instructions as possible based on its dependencies. And that could be very useful if I then need to use that in other drawing elements that already exist. I'm now going to jump ahead slightly and add that new point on this curve onto our pattern piece. So this is a list of items on our pattern piece, including that spline, list of nodes defining our piece. Um, it's going to split F1925, so I'm going to put our new node in, B14, and I'm going to put another S spline F19, F25, and then because those will have got added at the bottom, I'm going to reorder those to put B14 there, and spline F1925 there, and that then will give us a piece on that curve, which we can't see. And then I'm going to go to B14 and say that that is a notch. Uh, it's a slit notch. Okay. Then I'm going to go and have a look at this piece, and we we'll now see that we have a notch at waist height. I'm now going to go back to the drawing. We can rename drawing elements out of edit. We could change this to waste F, for instance, and that will rename into formulas as well. Uh, let's make this waste back. If we want to put things into groups, for instance, these curve control elements, we could create a new group. Uh, we can add other elements to that group. By default, it adds to the group you added to last. Just to make that nice and quick. And then you can, on the same menu, you can hide the group that an object is on. Like so. And then you can show or hide these from this menu. You can also use an image as uh, a wallpaper. Let me just pick an image. Okay, so this is this image here. And I'm going to go full screen, and you can see the image there. It's currently in the wrong place. Uh, this icon here has been added to the toolbars because there's, wall, there's a wallpaper. I'm going to unlock that, which gives me this resizing control. I can also drag to position. So I can resize that a little bit more. That's about right. So I can compare images with what I'm creating. So I'll lock that again. So that background resizes, pans with the drawing, and I can show or hide that like so. So now I'm going to leave full page mode, go back to pieces. I'm going to do the back piece. Now I'm going to start off by showing you the copy piece functionality. There we go. I've got another piece now, uh, which I'm going to call 
back. But obviously there's a copy of front. Uh, I'm actually going to do some editing on that. I'm going to delete all of the existing nodes. Like so. And then I'm going to add some nodes that I'm using on the back piece. I've actually got this pattern open again in another browser window. That's how I know what this steps should be. Having defined my pieces, I can export them all either from here and download that, or I can do that from the export tab. I can pick the person whose measurements I want to use and generate that from there. If I open up that SVG in the drawing tool, then I can see that I've got a nice grouping, I've got grouping by pieces, I've got uh, a line for the seam line, the seam allowance line, internal paths, all nicely organized. And the labels. And if I prefer dark mode, then that's accommodated. I can also use this on my iPad. Log in, touch to pick a pattern, pinch to zoom in and zoom out, touch to select an item, second touch to bring up the menu or a long touch, and I can do the same editing in this environment and also obviously. I can also use this on my iPad. Log in, touch to pick a pattern, pinch to zoom in and zoom out, touch to select an item, second touch to bring up the menu or a long touch, and I can do the same editing in this environment and also obviously do the export as well. There we go, that's the export as an SVG. I hope that tour of the website was useful. If you have any feedback or any patterns don't work, don't load properly or render properly, then please do get in touch.